I look at a historical development in the 20th century and argue that the catastrophes of World War I and World War II led to a reaction against any strong beliefs, strong convictions, strong loyalties, strong loves. And the cultural project of the West has been to weaken these strong loves. So the basic idea is if nothing is worth fighting for, then nobody will fight. And the historical thesis of the book is that that process is coming to an end as people in the West don't want to live in a society with no loves. And there's a desire for a return of what I call the strong gods, which is a metaphor that means strong loves, nation, family, and God, obviously, as the strongest love. So I predict a, a return to commitment to solid things. And of course, here we see this um, war in Ukraine, which suggests exactly this process is, is starting to unfold in the West. Indeed. The, in the United States, we have a huge Catholic system, probably 100 Catholic universities. And they, in the last 50 years, they've worked very hard to become normal and part of the wider secular academic culture. So if uh, Harvard gets uh, a cold, then um, Catholic University of America gets the same disease. So it's part of this larger culture of academia. So only the most courageous schools, the most committed institutions that are committed to their Catholic identity can avoid uh, being pulled into the academic culture and all of its perversions. Uh, and the situation is that actually progressivism uh, turned from a, an economic project having to do with relations of labor and capital into, an, and this is a post-60s development, into a cultural project of liberation, whether it's sexual liberation, um, mostly the sexual revolution and sexual liberation. And so it, and then eventually it became post-national, uh, open borders. Um, so we have, we're now in 2022 and the United States to be a really true progressive, uh, open borders between men and women, open borders between the United States and the rest of the world. So you, it's a, I can tell you your, your view on immigration if you tell me your view on transgender ideology. I mean, they're linked together. They're both, they're both ideas of a limitless future with, with no impediments. And, and I think this is the open society consensus carried to its extreme. And as that developed in the 90s and into the aughts and now and in the last three uh, decades, it has created a reaction of people who don't want to live in a world where there are no boundaries and no borders. And, uh, or let's put it this way, there, where there's no center and no anchor. And this has created this polarization and it's a conflict over, it's a conflict over what, kind of, uh, what kind of, what it means to be human really at the deepest level. Uh, sometimes, you know, these populist movements can be, can be very cynic, led by very cynical politicians, but the underlying impulse of the public is a desperate attempt to find a leader who will anchor their societies in, in something solid. Mm. Nation, family, church. Those are the three fundamental, there are other things as well, of course, truth, but nation, family, church, those are the, those are the, traditional anchors of a person's life. You know, my family, my, my homeland, and then, and then my, my spiritual home.